What is going on, my reptile junkies? God, guys, I mean, it's been a long time in between amphibians, uh, and I'm sorry, but ugh, life is crazy right now, and I'm doing the best I can to get these videos even done and out there. But this is part three. My monitors and a tegu. I've got to throw him in there, even though he's not technically a monitor. Uh, he's a tegu, close enough. And uh, if you caught part two amphibians and part one uh, invertebrates arachnids, you know this is the whole reptile room tour broke down into different series. Uh, and for those of you keeping track of how many animals we have uh, for the contest section of it, a good question was asked in amphibians, you do not have to count the tadpoles. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, however, yeah. guys, we did forget. Oh, uh, Alyssa's squirrel frogs. And uh, there's three of these guys. There's three squirrel frogs, tree frogs in there. Um, they can see or not. There's yeah, one over I'll, here. I'll make sure I throw a clip in of them somewhere. Uh, but they are just, there's three squirrel tree frogs in there we brought back for Alyssa. We're not so, going to make you count the toads because Alyssa has way too many of these. Yeah, she's alternating <laughs> toads in and out. We make her let them go after a couple days. So, But no, you're not to count tadpoles. So anyway, without further ado, guys, let's get this done. Monitors, let's check out the mangrove first. Hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned, guys. All right, guys, here's the mangrove. Um... It's a species indigenous to Northern Australia. They live around the swamplands. Um, they're a semi-aquatic monitor. Uh, mangrove, uh, you know, from the name mangrove, you should kind of gather they, they live close to uh, um, coastal low-lying areas. Um, something interesting about this monitor, in the 1940s, they started exporting them to Japan um, and the Indonesians actually use them for a source of meat, which is crazy. So there's a pretty healthy population in Japan of these guys now, even though they originated, you know, like I said, from Australia. Um, he can live 12 years, 15, 12 to 15 is about normal. They can make it to 20. Um, he can get three and a half to four feet. Males, of course, being larger than females. Um, he's pretty active monitor, kind of skittish. He has not bit me, he has bit April. She got uh, between it and the cat. He is in this exoterra right now. It says a 36 by 36 by 18. This is nowhere near gonna house him permanently, but I like to start my monitors in a smaller enclosure and then grow them up, kind of helps them tame out a little bit. Um, he's got a hot spot right here running about 105 to 110, but he can get hotter if he likes, but he tends to like it right in this range. Uh, ambient temperatures no lower than 75. I usually leave that red light on all the time for him. Uh, with any monitor, just give him, you know, clean water, and he'll do good. I have a UVB light on him. Um, there's a, you know, some people say you don't need a UVB light. Uh, I give my mon all my monitors UVB. Uh, they get it in nature, even if it's a little bit. So I at least want to give them the option, and uh, it seems to work out pretty good for me. So, and there's Mo coming to check him out as normal. <laughs> but that is the mangrove really really neat critter really neat monitor uh 12 to 20 years i think i told y'all and real quick before we go there's my male leaf tail i know this is monitors but uh i'm gonna do a do a do-it-yourself video on this what looks like uh cage furniture it was actually pvc pipe i burn it with a torch and i am planning on doing a video on that hey nobody uh a good mold free cage furniture see all right guys let's get back out to the reptile room to the other monitors stay tuned all right guys here's my savannah um it's my two-year-old male picked up at a repticon a couple years back or a year back or so he was already about half this size you can go back and see him uh how much he's grown um african species uh they supposedly like to dig. I had a dig box in here. He never used it. He spends most of his time up under that log or up here. He's got about a hundred and uh, 120, 125 degree basking spot there. Um, he's usually actually standing up. He's gonna knock it down. Of course, UVB light on him. Keep the humidity for these guys. You know, 50 to 70 percent is ideal. Uh, 80 to 90 degrees for an ambient temp. I feed him. Um, 
of course rodents sparingly he gets uh, rodents about once a week but uh, just like my other monitors which I didn't even cover that with the mangrove uh, of course the mangroves the smaller monitors they get roaches Madagascar hissing roaches uh, crickets and uh, a staple of fish uh, chicken turkey um, beef just salmon and but um, I don't feed them a whole pile of rodents and then once a week I also I, I do a calcium dust on you know on their food but that is my savannah, uh, 12 to 15 years in captivity, no problem, up to 20 years like other monitors. Um, she's going to get about three and a half to four feet, or he, sorry. Uh, males, of course, being bigger than females, but so another good size monitor, really mellow monitor, good monitor to start with, guys, if you're thinking about getting one. Doesn't grow too terribly large, unmanageable size. Of course, she's not going to stay in here forever. Which this enclosure has not really been ideal for for this for this guy. I had to put up stuff to help keep the humidity, and it still gets dry in here being a wood enclosure that screen top. But there's my savanna. Let's move on to another one. Say bye. And here's my Argentine black and white tegu. Uh, if y'all watch some earlier videos, you'll see I got this guy for my birthday. Right now he's being housed in uh, this really poor looking. 120 gallon. Uh, I'm definitely going to build him something nice in the near future. He is growing leaps and bounds on me. He's got a really deep layer of substrate. These guys really enjoy digging. Of course, as the name implies, Argentine comes from South America. It's one of the larger tegus. Uh, they can get four to four and a half foot as a male. Females typically only get about three foot. They really enjoy we said digging high humidity 70 to 90 percent range i missed him daily this is a mixture of coconut fiber um peat moss you know just like from lowe's and a little bitty bit of sand in his uh, just for some drainage keep a, a good size water bowl something large enough for him to get in which he's going to need to get that upgraded too he's done really well as you can see here i'm pretty sure he's a male um, his hot spot over there is about 100 degrees, maybe a little over at some, certain points of the day. You can see how he's hissy now just because I'm rubbing him down. Uh, they are real temperamental. Some days they like to be messed with and some days they don't. Um, he gets everything to eat that my monitors get with the exception this guy enjoys melons such as uh, cantaloupe, watermelon. And I keep his ambient temperature in here, you know, as long as you stay above 75 degrees, it seems to be thriving, thriving perfect. He's just growing, oh, he's growing so much. And he's a really intelligent lizard. Um, great, I mean, just great. Other than the size, you know, he's going to really get big. I can't wait to see him that big, but that is my Argentine. All right, back in the room, guys. Over here, this is the Similis monitor. I don't know if y'all remember, I was trying to get a mangrove for April, and we had an order in for underground reptiles for a mangrove, and they had sold out before they realized it. They called us back, and they told April that this guy um, is similar in temperament to the mangrove, which is nowhere near true, and, and they had also said that um, it's not like a timmer monitor which it, it really is other than being dark colored and if y'all watched the earlier video it is a little bit more non not as skittish as the uh the timmer but it's still classified in the timmer family it's still a dwarf monitor uh, found uh, australia um also found on the island of timor just like the team you know the timmer monitor i normally got a pretty good sized piece of cork bark in there with him but you wouldn't be able to see him if I had it in there, so I pulled it out for the video. But just a good-sized water dish, plenty of stuff to climb on. He's got a hot spot of about 110. Seems to to do fine there. Uh, and of course, with everything else in here, the it doesn't get no lower than 78 in this room at night. He's really thriving, but he's really shy still. He's been eating um, really well. That is the similis. Uh, spotted tree monitor also called and that is the uh, this the similis it, it is varana similis 
they like you know decent humidity i just missed at his enclosure there again good size water bowl he'll soak and they do enjoy to dig from time to time i get his cork bark back in there he's been a good look at but he's still jumpy uh, this fan just like the timbers and y'all have seen the timbers and in, in other videos there's one back there let's see if i can get him up oh, yeah bud oh that's the bigger of the two and you can tell I, I keep it and there's the other one right there I keep it damp but I let it dry out in between plenty of stuff for these guys to climb on because they're also you know a, a pretty much a boral uh, monitor another dwarf monitor island of Timor and they enjoy they sometimes they get up under the water bowl or you know sometimes I'll find them just buried up in the substrate they, they tend to to enjoy that and I'm hoping that by the size I got one one of these come from a Repticon show about two or two years I guess or better ago and the other one I had actually ordered it from underground reptiles uh, the bigger of the two come from the reptile show but I've, I've had them around the same time they're about exactly the same size when I got them you can anticipate these guys living 12 to 15 years and uh, as far as size goes um, same with the the, the symbolist monitor I don't think I mentioned that they'll get about um, 18 to 24 inches the symbolists will, will definitely get about 24 inches be a lot larger but these guys for the most part stay pretty slender um, they're really flighty though I'll probably get bit this one's a lot more chill than the other one as far as being able to touch it now that, that little deal right there's a demon so you do he'll light you up if you grab him so just a, a good size water bowl is, is they'll swim just like you see that one doing this thing is getting away but it's really important guys you, you got to change the water out of your monitors at least every day because they get all that crap in there and clean water is is a very important with a monitor with you know any reptile of course but much much more so you know with a monitor um 100 to 110 degree hot spot in here which is you know about right right in here it stays um you know 100 105 degrees i've never seen them get up they will get up sometimes you see them upside down on there but and keep the ambient same you know no lower than 75 to 80 and and you'll do you know you'll do fine with them really neat really neat species another dwarf monitor you good going so let me hold you <laughs> all right let's go check out last but not least mr poseidon stay tuned guys all right guys last but not least uh and a lot of you have seen my asian water monitor poseidon uh alduin poseidon um you guys actually named it uh my buddy uriah actually named it and april come up with poseidon and which is really cool with the water but anyway Here's uh, Poseidon, he's chilling in his water bowl. He's gonna, maybe he'll come out and say hello. Where he spends a large amount of his time between there and there and there. Uh, he does do a little bit of digging. And I'm gonna, uh, let's just sit him out so you can see him. Probably be mad at me. Uh, Asia water monitor. Of course he comes from Asia, South Asia. It's the second uh, largest lizard behind the Komodo dragon as far as weight goes these guys can live 10 to 15 years as average the longest in captivity was actually 25 years and the largest one of these on record was actually 10 and a half foot which is is crazy he's a he's a really big baby he's probably hungry I'll let him get up there as you can see him a little better really really chill Hey, he's grown a pile since we got him he eats a lot I feed him every other day uh, <laughs> he eats salmon and turkey and he gets rats and mice and just all kind of good stuff really lazy yeah you look at that belly jeez he's really he's really kind of obese guys but his enclosure I just he's completely I just completely stripped it he's healthy uh, it's about three month mark 
four month, I guess about four month mark. I spot clean when he goes to the bathroom. Most of the time it's, it's in his water bowl when he goes. And I, of course I have a drain built in. You can go back to when I built this enclosure for him. I kind of didn't do a step by step, but I had it broke up into pieces. Um, but his water bowl has a drain. I use reverse osmosis water on him and all my reptiles. But yes, he, he is a big baby. He's never tried to bite me intentionally. But he, he doesn't really mind you. I, I guess he tolerates you, I could say. But he does seem to enjoy being around people, you know, time to time. He's a big lazy lug. He has a hot spot up there of about 125 to 130 range. Uh, he's also, he can go up here to his heat, which is a pig blanket. It stays about 85 degrees on the top of that pig blanket. It's just supplemental heat. And then if it is gonna drop below 70 degrees, I'll turn on his red light over his water bowl. And, Cause that's pretty much his daily. He comes down there, goes in his water bowl, chills out for a while. And it goes back up. There he goes. There he goes. <laughs> and his graceful self that he is. Poseidon has really done great. But guys, really think about it if you're wanting to, uh, to think about getting something like this. This is not his permanent enclosure. The Tegu will probably end up in here. And I'm going to try to enclose my back deck. And like half, a of half of it's going to be for him. Right now, this enclosure is an eight foot by four foot by six foot off the stand, on the stand. This is almost seven foot, which is actually is all built in. So you're not, of course, going to take it off the stand, but you know what I mean. <laughs> he eats a pile though. And I use a product called F10, and I actually I bought uh, just a small bottle to try it. I've had this bottle what three months probably. Yeah. And you do like two and a half milliliters of it in one of these 32 ounce spray bottles and anytime he has an accident i spray it down with a little f10 wipe it down real good and then hose it off with my mister real good and wipe it again it's a really good cleanup and the substrate should last you with spot cleaning and everything else like i said about three to four months and then you have to strip it down when i strip it down i f10 everything and uh throw it back together and this is a mixture of organic pot and soil um spangem moss that you get from lowe's and a big brick peat moss and about 10 or 15 percent sand and it gets his water bowl cleaned every day drain it refill it very important clean water you don't have any poo in there yet though. that's the good thing that's just mostly crap but there he is Don't bite me. <laughs> that would be awful, wouldn't it? First time getting bit on YouTube. Yeah. Anyway, guys, that's there. it. As always, I really appreciate you guys watching. That was part three. All of my monitors. Hope you're keeping track out there. I'm going to give away a really cool prize pack at the end. Um, next video, I guess we'll do the rest of just lizards and geckos thrown together. And we've also got some new additions yeah, to show Yeah, we got some everybody. rescues. Um, a guy I know is... His rental house, the people left about a month ago, and they actually left a Kenyan Samboa, which we think is an anery. It needs to shed, but it looks really poor right now. And a bearded dragon. And they were in that house, guys, for like a month with nobody, you know, nothing. And the dragon's doing awesome. I'm sure, really I made a little video in there. Yeah. And there was some tree frogs, too. Um, they were, yeah, they were jerky. But yeah, a whole month. Some people are crap. That's why not everybody needs animals. And we also got some furries to show everybody. Yeah, yeah sugar gliders. If you follow me on uh, Instagram, I picked up a pair of um, sugar gliders from a guy over in South Carolina for April. Got them in a reptarium uh, deal from ZooMed or Iguanarium. They're doing really well. Doing neat. We we'll do a video on them as well as like a product review on that Iguanarium deal. Uh, we got it really cheap on Amazon. You can find them on sale. Not really the greatest thing for iguana, but we'll get to that in another video. Guys, hope you enjoy monitors. Might be long, I don't know. Once I get it all compressed together, hope not. But uh, as always, any questions, leave them below for me. I'll do my best to answer them or direct you somebody that can. Uh, almost at 2,000. Insane, guys. Blow it away. Humble. Really appreciate y'all watching. 
Hope you all enjoy it. We'll catch you next time.